Harry's wife. Harry to Africa, but no Harry's wife. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We know from Spare that one of the po few positive things that came out of that was Harry's love of Africa. That he enjoyed being there. He enjoyed the charitable work that he undertook. That a man who is somewhat cerebrally, cha cerebrally challenged found it invigorating, liberating for him to be able to roll his sleeves up and get stuck into some honest graft. I've maintained that Harry would be at his most content living in Africa, away from the press that he apparently despises so much, able to engage in an environment which has provided him with historic comfort. He would truly be an environment where he would probably thrive and find both sanctuary and contentment. Of course, that is not going to suit Harry's wife. Why? Well, first of all, his contentment is irrelevant. It's only her needs that matter. Secondly, Africa? No. Where's the glamour in Africa for Harry's wife? Where are the film premieres? Where is the dabbling in philanthropy? She doesn't want to actually be on the front line, seeing the misery and suffering of individuals affected by famine, affected by conflict, affected by disease. Good Lord, no. Also, it would mean that she would have to deal with lots of unfortunate people, and she doesn't want to be associated with them. For all of the talk that she issues about being compassionate, we know from her behaviour that there isn't an ounce of genuine compassion in her body. We also know that she only regarded Africa as a stepping stone with regard to her own ambitions. You'll recall when she was flown out there, all expenses paid, and ended up doing a photo shoot for her own benefit rather than actually dealing with what the charity required, as explained by Tom Bauer in Revenge. That demonstrates the self-absorption of Harry's wife and how what she does is what matters. She is not interested in Africa because she doesn't see it as commensurate with the view that she has of herself. She doesn't see, for instance, that it is glamorous enough, that it doesn't provide her with the money that's so important to her. Of course, there would be people that she could control. She could utilise attendance there for the management of the facade, and she could monetize it, but not to the same extent. It would also mean that she'd probably actually have to get involved in doing some hard work, something she doesn't want to because she's a work-shy fop. Notice that when it came to departing the United Kingdom, which was subconsciously done by her for the purposes of asserting control over those that had posed a threat to control, arising as a consequence of the perceived treatment of her, that she didn't go to Africa. That would have been a logical choice. Harry has been there many times. He really enjoys being there. Of course, in the golden period, I think when they went to Botswana together, she will have made out that it was magical and wonderful because her narcissism told her that it was. But once that golden period has evaporated, and it always does, her reaction to going to Botswana would be, why? And she'd wrinkle her nose. Indeed. Even if Harry were to suggest it and say, we can sleep beneath the stars again, he would, she would turn around and poo-poo the idea. Oh, good Lord, no, Harry. Last time we were there, I got bitten all over. The smell was awful. I couldn't sleep for all of the noise of the animals. You never complained at the time, he says. And of course she never did, because she never did. And she didn't complain at the time because her narcissism caused her to see it as wonderful, because he was painted white and it was through the lens of the golden period. But once he's in devaluation, everything that was once deemed to be good is viewed as being awful. And therefore, her narcissism revised history to suggest that she didn't actually enjoy the experience to ensure that she doesn't have to go back again. Even if Harry were to say to her, you didn't say anything at the time, she would counter that threat to control by suggesting, well, I didn't want to upset you.
But there's news now that Harry is planning a new documentary in Africa without Harry's wife as part of the $100 million Netflix deal. This has been reported across the press, and I've settled upon LBC, leading Britain's conversation, to provide us with the news update. Prince Harry and Harry's wife have only one deal left since stepping down from their royal duties after their deal with Spotify fell through earlier this month. Several of the people, several of the couple's show's ideas are understood to have been rejected, but one proposal by Harry, a documentary in Africa, is expected to move forward. It comes after reports that Netflix were also planning to end their deal with the Sussexes when it expires in 2025. Obviously, Harry has a lot of roots in Africa and he feels at home there, a source told Page Six. A source familiar with the couple's $100 million Netflix deal told the outlet, Things are great. A Netflix spokesperson said this week, We value our partnership with Archwell Productions. It is unclear exactly what the programme will cover, but the ongoing Hollywood writers' strike has meant Harry has not been able to move forward with his ideas as of yet. Harry and Harry's wife have so far only worked with the streaming service on one project, their Harry and Harry's wife documentary which was released last year, and will also be releasing a series called Heart of Invictus, based on a group of Invictus game competitors from around the globe. He previously worked with Apple on a series about mental health titled The Me You Can't See. Harry has spent a lot of time in Africa over the years and even took Harry's wife there for their third date. She told interviewers for Harry and Harry's wife, so I had one week off work and it was the same week, so he said, do you want to come to Botswana? I said, let me think about it, and then I did. Harry said he was astonished that she said yes, he's only met her twice at the point. The woman that I've only met twice, she's coming to Botswana, and we're going to be living in a tent for 10 days. Of course, Harry didn't realise that she was wanting to do that because she needed to bring him under control as she was seducing him. It is indicative of the fact that he is going to be going to Africa to film this, but without her. Why is that the case? Well, one, he does love Africa and will see that it will provide value. She will come up with excuses of needing to be with the children, although, of course, the children could go with them. The fact is, because he's in a sustained devaluation, she sees no need to support him. Furthermore, she would rather focus elsewhere. Whilst he's away, it will provide her with opportunities to try and ensnare his replacement. She has no love of Africa. It does not tick the boxes for her with regard to the subconscious prime aims. It isn't interesting enough. It isn't glamorous enough. And therefore, she may well say, I understand that you love Africa, Harry, and you go, because it simply serves her purposes to control him by allowing him to go, controlled by agreement, thus freeing up time for her to focus on her. When the victim is in sustained devaluation, the narcissist is more likely to allow them that victim to go about other things because the narcissist isn't thinking about them as much because the narcissist is focused upon their own endeavours. And it's certainly the case that whilst Harry is in Africa planning this new documentary and conducting it, Harry's wife will be swanning around, partying, her narcissism guiding her to try and ensnare a replacement for hapless Harry. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.